Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Riddle. Um, I'm a clinical psychologist. Uh, uh, surrogacy is my area both of clinical expertise and also um, I do research in this area. So I'm going to share with you today, and I'm very pleased to be here uh, this evening to talk with you about what we know um, in the psychological realm. I wanted to acknowledge uh, Nicola Carone and the International Surrogacy Research Group. Uh, he and his group did a tremendous job pulling together a lot of research, which helped me in the preparation of my talk. So I'm going to give you a brief and broad overview in some of the areas um, where we have outcome data. And we're going to overview, first, the outcomes of the surrogate mother themselves, the psychological outcomes, and also research on their experience of surrogacy. Another really important consideration is the surrogate's family. What do we know about how surrogacy impacts the surrogate's family? How are children doing who have been born through surrogacy? And how are families doing who have been created through surrogacy? And then I'm going to speak uh, just for a second on future directions of research. So I wanted to acknowledge the um, guidelines set forth by the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. So they have very recent practice committee guidelines and also ethics committee opinions on the use of a gestational surrogate. And the practice guidelines specify that the use of a gestational surrogate is medically appropriate when there are medical conditions which would preclude an intended parent from carrying a pregnancy when it could harm the woman or the baby. And I also wanted to acknowledge that the practice committee guidelines have also, the most recent ones, also speak to the fact that surrogacy is being increasingly used uh, for same-sex couples to build their families. The ethics committee opinion from ASRM speaks to the appropriateness of the use of a gestational carrier and that it is ethically justified and I'll just read the quote here, uh, when a gestational carrier is provided all the material information about the benefits and the risks of the arrangement, gives fully informed consent, receives legal advice, health care, emotional support, and psychological counseling. So I'm going to start with uh, what we know about surrogate mothers. I'm going to cite a meta-analysis, a recent meta-analysis um, out of Finland, headed up by uh, Vivica Soderstrom and Tilla. And I hope I'm not slaughtering her name too, too terribly. I have heard her speak about surrogacy. She's a big advocate for surrogacy uh, in Europe. And she wrote this paper and noted that you know, uh, surrogacy is on the rise and that it's very important that we pull all this research together so that we can draw some conclusions about the outcomes. The um, section of the meta-analysis on surrogate mothers um, included 16 studies and concluded that there were no, I need to catch up with myself here, uh, concluded there were um, there was no evidence of serious psychopathology amongst the women, that as a group their motives were primarily altruistic, that the rates of postpartum depression were uh, between 0 and 20 percent. I noted the following two studies, Clock and Covington and the Sims study. These are studies here in the U.S. that actually were designed to uh, create normative data on the types of psychological measures that mental health professionals typically use to evaluate gestational surrogates, which are typically the MMPI-2 and the PAI. So those are probably the largest uh, samples that were pulled together. And again, as a group uh, found to be free from significant psychopathology, uh, the Finnish meta-analysis noted that difficulties with relinquishment were reported to be rare, ranging between 2 and 6 percent. I wanted to note this Lambda study. So this was a study that looked at 50 Indian surrogates. They were matched against 69 uh, pregnant mothers. And I thought the two big takeaways from that study were that there was no greater psychological distress based on any type of bonding between the mother and the baby, either during pregnancy or after uh, relinquishment and that women who reported being depressed, that there were these predictive factors that included not having social support, 
um, being criticized for being a surrogate or feeling they had to hide the fact that they were being surrogates. So it wasn't the process of surrogacy that was predictive of depression, but rather those sort of social constructs surrounding the surrogacy. And the um, longest outcome data we have is from Susan Gollenbach's group in the UK. Uh, they looked at 20 surrogates one year out and then again 10 years out. Uh, all psychological measure scores fell within normal limits. Uh, these women said their marriages were strong, they felt very positively about the babies that they had had, and that they had very positive relationships with the intended parents. Uh, two studies out of Canada, Samantha Yee, I'll note the second one there, it's the most recent study. She uh, had 90 surrogates and almost 97% of them reported little to no problem with relinquishment. And I thought it was interesting that the surrogates who were more likely to stay in contact with their intended parents were surrogates whose intended parents were either uh, gay fathers or single men rather than single mothers or heterosexual parents. Okay, so now I wanna talk about the impact of surrogacy on the surrogates' families. We have one study out of the UK that looked at 36 children of surrogates. Uh, they ranged in age from 12 to 25, with the vast majority stating they viewed their mother's uh, surrogacy pregnancy very positively that almost half of them had good relationships and had stayed in touch with the surrogate children, uh, and that there was no difference, there were no negative outcomes reported, and it didn't matter whether their mother had been either a gestational or a traditional surrogate. So this is one of my areas of research. I published a small study uh, back in 2017 of a small group of uh, children of surrogates here in the US who all scored within normal limits on psychological measures. Both the mothers, the surrogates, and their children reported a positive experience. And there were a couple of kids who had some more complicated feelings about their mother's surrogate pregnancy, which led me to my current research, which is ongoing. This is an active study. I'm hoping to find some more families to participate. But I wanted to expand on that previous research, and I really wanted to look at what is the impact of surrogacy on the surrogate's entire family system, in particular the children. Um, but looking at the family dynamics of surrogates, the impact on the family system, I reported on some of this preliminary data at ASRM a couple of weeks ago uh, with 30 parents and 23 children, and children endorsed positive emotions at the highest rates. 74% um, of the children, when asked if uh, surrogacy had had a positive effect on their life, a negative effect, or both, 74% reported a positive impact. All family members scored within normal limits on psychological measures across a number of measures. And um, there was a small percent, again, of some low levels of anxiety, ambivalence. I was able to look at uh, younger children. So the UK study, uh, the ages ranged from 12 to 25. I was able to look at children as young as eight. Um, I'm still working through this data and again hoping to find some more families. So really wanna look at uh, if there are any children having any kind of reaction, what the risk factors would be um, so that you know we can intervene appropriately. Okay, so let's look at children born through surrogacy. And primarily we have the meta-analysis from 2016 that included eight studies. These were all from the UK, uh, the vast majority from Susan Gollenbach's group. Uh, her research team followed 42 children from one to 10 years of age. These were all children of heterosexual parents. There were no major differences in psychological development across different types of families. So she looked at families through surrogacy, uh, gamete donation, IVF, no differences across families. The surrogacy children exhibited some minor adjustment issues at age seven, which then had resolved by age 10. And her most recent study, she wanted to look at adolescence. So she had 14 year olds compared against uh, again, all through uh, the three family types and found there were no differences at age 14 between children coming from uh, various means of conception. 
Uh, those were the other two studies in the meta-analysis, Shelton and Jadva et al. Again, no, um, no differences in psychological adjustment, no negative outcomes. All right, when we look at intended parents, the meta-analysis included 16 studies which were primarily from the UK. There were no psychological adjustment issues found um, in the mothers, in mother-child interactions. And the studies found that the majority of parents are telling their children how they were born. And then looking specifically at gay father surrogate family outcomes, we have a number of studies looking at a number of factors. Um, this cross-cultural study from 2018, again, was comparing gay fathers through surrogacy, lesbian mothers through uh, gamete donation, and heterosexual parents through IVF. There were no differences across any of the families on any of those psychological constructs. Kim Bergman and her group found that gay fathers uh, reported an increased uh, feelings of self-esteem by becoming parents through surrogacy. And uh, another number of recent studies have found that children of gay fathers exhibit high levels of adjustment, that any psychological problems they may be having are associated with being stigmatized, or that there are other family issues that have nothing to do with the means by which they became a family. There are two Corone studies, both published in 2019, one showing that children of gay fathers show lower levels of uh, gender nonconforming behavior. In other words, they are not exhibiting any increased levels of gender nonconforming behavior. And that by middle childhood, children of gay fathers um, exhibit very positive attachment to their fathers, mediated by the types of behaviors that foster secure attachment in all families, which is loving parents, consistent parenting, uh, stability, and warmth. Um, and lastly, uh, gay fathers um, maintain relationships with both surrogates and the surrogate's family. Gay fathers themselves have articulated the importance they place on the relationship and the role that it plays in helping them bond with their children. And that the factors that have been found to contribute to loss of contact between parties seems to be more closely linked to agencies, and this has been found in some Asian agencies where there's a language barrier, where the agencies are not facilitating or encouraging contact. So bottom line, we need more research, always, always. We certainly need more research here in the United States. Unfortunately, we don't have as many resources. There's limited funding. We're working on that. Um, but the last two points I want to make is, as a clinical psychologist with, with expertise in the assessment of gestational surrogates, I always want to promote the importance of the psychological screening component, uh, that screening is appropriate, that it's thorough that we are tuned in to developing support interventions for all parties so that we can ensure positive outcome um, for everyone involved in these arrangements. So thank you. If you have any questions, I'm around, uh, and I'd be happy to answer those.